And when we hear, you know, 45 million being put to work, maybe you can give us more insights because, you know, we see those headlines, but when we say put to work, how does, where does it go? How, how, what are you specifically investing in? What does that look like? So if you have a company and you have a nexus in North Dakota anywhere and you need money for an A round, B round or venture debt or whatever you need, you go to O'LearyVentures.com and you upload your deck. O'LearyVentures.com is a complete infrastructure just to look through all of the deals we get every day. And then we find ones that we think are going to work. We contact the management. They give us presentations online and we start our due diligence. We have two deals we're planning on closing next week already. We just announced the deal, the, the program about eight days ago. And now we have two deals we think merit an investment, somewhere between one and five million each. Let me ask you this, with uh, the North Dakota focus now, are you looking to turn the page from, obviously, FTX? Are you moving on? Of course. I mean, FTX turned its own page. The judge has told everybody involved to stop talking to each other. So we're not going to hear a lot of news out of that. I don't think there's going to be any dialogue at all except recovery. The whole narrative at FTX now is about recovery. If there's one silver lining on this whole FTX thing, it's the fact that it poked the bear in Washington. I'm getting countless calls from senators and congressmen and women who are interested in pushing the agenda on policy and regulation around digital payment systems first. And so I think what's going to happen here is we're going to be a much better place within 12 to 14 months because it's a bipartisan effort. Finally, we've got people that are saying, look, we got to stop having these companies blow up. Since you and I last talked, Genesis filed for yeah. bankruptcy. They're going to right. keep going bankrupt because they're so full of rogue players and no do-gooders and, you know, fraudsters and all this stuff. Everybody's tired of it. It's just setting back the potential of what crypto and digital payment systems can be. So my guess is, Danielle, and I bet you I'm going to be right on yeah. this. Within three years, you're going to see that all of these rogue players and these unregulated, decentralized you know, exchanges and all this crap is going to be gone. And the players that are here today won't be around because they don't know how to make money in a regulated environment. It's going to be the new discipline players that come out of the banking system that run the crypto markets and they'll work within compliance and it'll be something that'll grow. And I believe we'll still become the 12th sector of the S&P. But I think our rogue days are behind us. Maybe three or four or five more bankruptcies just to clean it out with all the terrible managers and fraudsters, they'll all be gone. Then everything else will be cleared out, scrape the, you know, like a patina, all the garbage will be gone, and then we can move forward. When you say there's no longer communication, are, are you not speaking to SBF? Have there been any communication with him? No, not at all. I, I don't think SBF is allowed to talk to anybody anymore, nor any of the management of, uh, of FTX. Uh, the judges okay. shut all that down. The, the narrative is really about what's going on in the 1.2 billion plus 400 million plus 4.2 billion. These are the amounts that have been found in various jurisdictions. Everybody's talking about, okay, how do we allocate that now to the account holders, the equity holders, if anything? So, you know, I think FTX is behind us. Everybody kind of knows what happened there. I don't think you're going to hear much out of it for a couple of years. Um, I think people are, are looking at these lawsuits the SEC just put on. They're suing a few of these exchanges. Justice is after a couple. There's some audits going on. Genesis bankruptcy. There's always going to be someone going to zero for a while. So I think the narrative, the market's not even looking at that stuff anymore, Danielle. What's going on are people are focusing on AI. This whole chat GBT, the Microsoft acquisition, that's where the new focus of the market is in what's next. Uh, uh, before we move on from crypto here, I just want to get your thoughts on the latest from Charlie Munger. I'm sure you saw the headline that says the U.S. should follow in China's footsteps and ban cryptocurrencies. I mean, no surprise from, from, from Munger there. Uh, thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, look, I, I know Charlie's position on it. I love that guy because he's a cash flow guy, but that's never going to happen. Bitcoin's never going to go away. This, this, crypto is software. There's nothing nefarious about software. Software didn't do anything wrong. It's the people that were abusing it, misusing it, and frauding with it. And the bad actors, they're going to be gone. I mean, I agree with making them illegal, but not the actual technology, which is very advanced. You know, I'll give you a, I'll give you a use case that I think you'd appreciate. This just happened to me this week. So, you know, I'm a big watch collector. Um, oh, yeah. And there's a new hot uh, watchmaker that just emerged in Switzerland named Simon Briel. He is smoking hot. He made 12 production watches and then five special prototypes. These are going to be what I, I think he's the next FP Journe. Now, 
the ability to get one of these pieces, to get one of those five, he's only going to sell number three and four. So you have to be accepted as a collector. He has to know with certainty that you're going to honor his brand. He's like Picasso. So, wow, and where did he come from? He where came was out he and he came out. He was a watchmaker, an apprentice watchmaker, and then he started showing, showing some tendencies towards tremendous style, unbelievable dials, incredible, never seen before pieces of art, stunning, stunning, all kinds of innovations that no one's ever seen. Like the gears are, are made of shark teeth, or they look like little shark teeth working together. Of course, that fits for cool. me, being a shark and all that. But also yeah, yeah. incredible polishing techniques and this new modeling with gold on the dial, which is unbelievable. The point is to get that piece, you have to be accepted. And there's only two for sale. The first one went to a minister in the United Arab Emirates, who's a friend of mine. So he went on my behalf to Simon and introduced me. We did a long one hour Zoom. I talked, my, I, I gave my case. Anyways, I oh, won wow. the ability, I, I won that, that number four. So number three and four. I have number four. Now I have to pay him. I have to put my wow. down deposit on. So, so you have to make money. a pitch. You have I had to, to make pitch. Your I had to get on my knees, Danielle, and beg for the piece. I had to beg oh for the piece. Oh my goodness. Oh and my he, goodness. He, he, he this accepted is me. Crazy. Now I have to transfer the capital, which is material. Now get this. The SWIFT system, I take US dollars. I got to transfer right. it to a bank in Zurich. Three days. Right. They got my money for three days. They're not paying me any interest. Then I got to transfer the USD into Swiss francs. I get clipped 20 basis points there. And then I got to pay Simon. I'm getting totally screwed. Now, if I had... Yeah, but you don't a, care. Well, I, <laughs> I care because I realize if I could just use a, a digital payment system like USDC or any other one that was regulated, right. I could right. send it to him in one second. And so right, right. that's why this innovation is going to happen. And I'm just one use case, you know, but the point is these senators, yeah. these governors. Now, Toomey has retired. We knew he was carrying the digital football until yeah. Jan 3rd. Now we have Haggerty's team. He's picking up the baton. And I think he's going to become the go to senator kind of hockey sticking through this through the House. So I'm hoping that we'll get some policy in the next nine, 12 months. We'll see. Um, I want to talk investment strategy as we wrap here. And by the way, I saw that twinkle in your eye when you mentioned gold uh, in relation to the watch, Kevin. But I um, want to talk strategy. And uh, Ray Dalio says cash is more attractive than stocks and bonds on the back of the uh, rising rates here. Uh, your take. Yeah, I, I, I saw Ray's comments. Um, so we are at 38% cash, yielding about 3.2 to 3.8%, depending on duration. Uh, that's a, a pretty high amount for us right now. We also put on uh, a 4% uh, Bitcoin position uh, starting in the mid-November uh, after the FTX debacle. We had to reestablish some positions. But obviously, we put them up in Canada under the OSC jurisdiction, which is a completely compliant platform called BitBuy. That's where I hold it. And uh, that is one of my best performing assets. We were buying at just sub 17,000. Here we are at 23. It's been a great performer. Um, you know, everybody has their own opinion about, bit, about uh, uh, of, of any of the cryptos, actually. But um, I think now is a time to be very careful with, with crypto because, right. you, you know, Bitcoin, you don't have to have 32 positions. You can have six and you get the same volatility. On equities, I'm a little more cautious. Um, I, I won't buy anything now that doesn't have positive cash flow on all 11 sectors with distributions. I'm hoping to get 6% capital appreciation by year end on the equity, plus 2% yield of some kind. Um, bonds were terrible last year. We're tiptoeing into short duration, triple B and above a little bit. I, th I think you got to keep your powder dry. I'm kind of in that Ray camp. 38% mm -hmm. cash is a lot of cash. The big decision I'm trying to make today is how much of this chat, you know, AI do I want to buy? Um, it's a smoking hot deal. The valuation's crazy. But I think I have to participate.